here is another tree I just blew today um, while the other one dries and this one I actually blew it because I was going to have shown you this one but then I realized the way I have the camera normally it does not work for the blowing thing you couldn't see a darn thing other than my head so uh, same colors same idea you can see them here they are together so you can see now I'm going to show you a fun way of doing the um, foreground. We're going to do some rocks. And we're going to use the same colors that we already have in our painting. And um, so we're going to use that some red. We're going to use some of that Indian yellow that I like. Some of the uh, burnt sienna. A little bit of deep yellow. And um, the indigo and maybe a little bit of those blues that we have in the sky. So what I'm going to do is just lay in the colors. And first I'm going to lay in just a little bit and I'm not going to worry about those branches. Some of them will show and some of them maybe won't. I'm just putting a little bit of water on and I'm using a little dirty water so you can see. There's a little yellow in it. So you can see where I'm not putting the water everywhere, just like that. And I'm going to try and avoid the trunk of the tree. And then um, I am going to use a um, an old credit card to scrape with. So I am going to lay in some color. So I'm going to lay in some yellow. A little bit of that Indian yellow, possibly. There we go. And a little bit of the red. I like the red. It's nice. We have a little bit of red in a tree, so that will look nice. And then we are going to have some of our burnt sienna. Of course, that's in the tree too. So that's all my warm colors here. And then we're going to get some of that dark. That's mainly the indigo. There's a little bit of the blue in. So I'm trying to avoid the tree as best I can. So now that's very wet. It just needs to sit for a moment. Maybe I'll put a little bit of blue in right here so we can get maybe a little green. That would be kind of nice. That could be useful. Who knows? All right, so you can see I'm just waiting for it to dry a little bit. You can see it's quite wet. Still, so runny. Can you see how shiny it is? So we're just waiting for the colors to sink in a little bit. I'm going to use old, I think this was a phone card, doesn't matter, old credit card, room key, whatever you got. I, I used to um, cut them like this. And I like them because they have this nice rounded edge that come in handy and when I scrape my tree, um, my um, rocks that I'm going to scrape out now I use maybe about a mm, quarter inch or something of the side maybe a little bit of the corner but you don't want to use too much of the corner because then you just kind of I'm moving, I want to scrape the paint away and then deposit it so, and I, th I always say to my students think about rocks, think rock thoughts when you do this, or sometimes I use it to scrape up bark in trees and then I say, think tree thoughts. Anyway, so today it's rocks. So I'm going to, and the light is coming from this side, we decided. That's the lightest side of the tree, so I'm going to try and see if I can scrape out some highlights. Just like that. And then you can see, and the colors show up again that I have underneath and they pick up on since I use the same colors that's always a smart move use the same colors that you already have in your painting um, because then it looks like it's like reflections and stuff and you can also scrape out some little grasses and stuff and let's put a rock in here Oh, nice. 
nice. Got some really nice color there. And a couple more rocks here I think would be nice. So try to stay clear of my tree trunk. Can you see how that's beginning to look like rocks? And um, scrape out a few more weeds or whatnot. You have to practice this a little bit. It, it takes a little bit of a practice to get it. But once you got it, it's a lot of fun and I use it all the time in my backgrounds. You can also use a, like the sharp edge here, a little corner if you wanted some finer little grasses and stuff. That's too dry there. And then um, while it's still damp, I um, will go in and get some of my indigo. I'm going to find some of those edges behind some of these rocks and here. And I don't want to have hard edges, so I'm just going to loosen them a little bit. Maybe there's also a little bit behind this one. Can you see how that then brings out some of these rocks? And here definitely would be nice. There's here. Here would be, and this one's beauty. Out that brush. Okay. Thinking. Thinking this edge is too sharp. Same here. Loosen that edge a little bit. All right. So let me zoom in a little bit so you can see what I did. Doesn't that look like rocks? It does to me. This is impressionistic style anyway. You know, this is not like photorealism we're doing here. All right, so then I'll let that dry. And then I can decide if I'm happy with what I got or if I need to fix a few things. See you later. Here's a little tree. I'm just going to do one other thing to it, just to show you how to do that. And um, let's put one of those little knot holes in here. So first you take very dark color and do kind of a circle. Or, it doesn't have to be complete circle, you know. Nature, everything is kind of not necessarily perfect. So just with the, whatever you have left over of that um, indigo with a little blue and maybe a little bit of the burnt chenin. And then I'm taking kind of underneath and on the shadow side, which is here, and making like a little half moon. Make sure it's a little bit darker here. Like that. And then hopefully I want to soften that out here. Lose that edge. And just lose that edge. There we go. Might even see if I can run in a little bit darkness there. It'll be a little darker underneath. Of course, that knot, you know, it kind of sticks out from the tree, so it's going to cast like a shadow, is what I'm thinking. All right, like that. Better leave it alone now. So let me zoom in so you can see what I did. See, it's already kind of coming out. So then I'm just going to do one other little thing to it. And then I'm going to take a little scrubber brush here. 
and make sure it has clean water, not too, just barely damp. I'm going to turn this over and then I'm going to gently scrub out just a little bit. A little goes a long way with this. Clean it again. Scrub out a little bit more. Ooh. There. I think that's about it. You know, if you do it too perfectly, it doesn't look right. I don't ever have a problem with perf being perfect. I mean, I try f for perfection, but I never achieve it, so. All right, so that's how I put a little knob hole in, and I personally think this is kind of a cute, fun tree. I'm not gonna, it's not supposed to be, you know, perfect. Can you see it there? There's that little knob hole, and then there's my tree. Give that away, and there we have it. Fun little tree. Try it yourself, and um, see you next time. If you go to my website, beautyonlocation.com, you can uh, go to my page that says Eva's Tips and Tricks, and then uh, from there you can download a little handout about how to do this. And I also have another one on um, putting snow on evergreens. All right? Have fun. Happy painting.